Hey folks, Matthew Weiss here, WeissAdvice.com. In this video, I want to talk about one of the coolest plugins I think that's available. It's at this point even an older plugin, and yet I'm still discovering new things that I can do with it every day. This is going to be a little bit different because this plugin, it's such a creative device. It's like the sky's the limit. I can't show you all the ways that I use it. All I can do is basically show you some of the ways I use it and some of the thought process. I'm talking about Sound Toys Effect Rack. It's a fully modular multi-effects unit. You load things in as you want them and you can just create such a cool sort of slew of effects. So I'm gonna play a little bit of this chorus section and then I'm going to talk about how I might use it for a record like this. But I mean, this is just going to be one example of, of multitudes in which this plugin can be utilized and used. So if you caught Monday's video, you might remember a little moment where I mentioned that I wish some of the instrumentation that was in this record was a little bit fuller and I was utilizing a little, a little bit more. So that inspired me to go over to this chorus synth right here, this kind of weird flute synth. Which is kind of the heart of the chorus. Musically, it's it's what's kind of telling us, hey, we're in the chorus now. I thought, what what would be some ways where I could use Effect Rack to fill up the space? So I started messing around with it. Now, how I use this, I I'm not going to lie. I'm still figuring it out because there's just so much you can do with it. Everything, you have a mix knob on every single control. You can load in any Sound Toys effect unit in any number of times. I could just stack Filter Freak like a dozen times in this if I wanted to. And so there's all sorts of worlds of experimentation that I haven't even delved into yet that I really should. But one thing I will say is I use presets in this all the time. I know that presets are like kind of taboo in some spheres or whatever, but I'm going to tell you right now, all of your favorite mix engineers are using a combination of presets, some of which are factory provided and then maybe tweaked a little bit. Others are ones that they've developed for themselves, but they still end up being presets. There's nothing wrong with using a preset, particularly on a very complicated plugin like this one. In this particular case, though, I decided I wanted to just kind of develop something ground up. So whenever I'm doing that, I, I have to start with a vision for what I want. I can't just be like, I am going to use effect rack and I am going to use it. That doesn't make any sense. People do this with EQs and compressors, and that doesn't make sense. It sure as heck doesn't make sense for something that's as multitudinous as this. So I was thinking, like, I'm using a lot of phasers. I'm using a lot of moving filters and glitchy sounds. Maybe I should start with something that's particularly, like, in that orientation in order to get my sound first. So I started with Filter Freak. I happen to be a huge fan of Filter Freak. I've used it in a couple other videos. I, I think it's one of the coolest plugins ever made uh, because it takes such a conventional device, a filter, and really just makes it into something special. So I kind of centered in on the fundamental frequency here, and I used some pretty steep resonant high pass and low passes to get that. Graphically, you can kind of see what I'm centering in on here, and that's what I'm cutting in and out. But let me turn this this way first, not get into the dynamics yet. So that's like the fundamental tone. And then everything above that is kind of the more interesting stuff. The next thing that I'm doing is I'm setting this threshold because you can dynamically modulate the filter cutoff points. So now when the sound triggers, it opens up the envelope. It moves the filter cutoff points to a higher tone. And this creates this really interesting effect. It gives us that, that quintessential filter freak swishiness of the resonant filters moving. And then it also really emphasizes the deeper tones when we get that release. And we hear that a lot in the reverb, which is not something that was jumping out in this particular sound to begin with. Now, I think that this is too assertive for what we're doing, but if I use this mix knob at 50-50, then we get this nice blend of both.
we get those really cool lasery reverb tails that are going to go on. Wow. Like it's, it's a nice sound that we didn't intrinsically have. It was there, but we're really, really bringing it out and coloring it and giving it that extra bit of resonant movement. So that's my first step here. Second thing, I think we could add a little bit of ambience to it. We could fill up that space with just some very conventional delays. And one of the things that's great about this kind of stuff is you don't always have to be crazy and tricky with everything. Sometimes just a nice little bit of eighth note delay with some feedback just sounds great. So I'm using about 25% wet here so that we, we hear the eighth note, but it's not like dominating the sound. And then the real fun comes in after we've got all this fun stuff happening in the tails and these delays, that's when we pull on Devil Lock, which is a really, really aggressive compressor. So I'm really mostly using it for the compression, but sometimes the way it breaks things up with this like very square wavish distortion is really, really nice. So you hear it's like almost like a brick wall limiter. I'm going to turn down this uh, this low pass too. So we get some cool square waving happening. We hear like all these crusties show up in the reverb and delay. And I love that kind of textural stuff. It, it provides this sense of like rawness to a record. It gives it like intrigue and texture and fun. So I'm using the darkness thing to kind of pull out some of the crackliness, just kind of reduce the crackliness overall. But I'm still keeping a little bit there. And then again, there's a mix knob on everything. So maybe I don't want that much of it. Maybe I really only want this much of it. And that's great. I love it. It's giving me tone. It's giving me texture. It's giving me movement. Like we're developing something that's really, really cool. Lastly, Radiator is a great way of adding a sense of saturation to like the main mid body of a sound, which is typically between about 300 and 600 hertz, which is exactly where this sounds like it's living, maybe closer to the 300 range. I don't know, I haven't ran it through an analyzer or anything. But basically, again, this one is just doing something very simple. It's just beefing up that range. So without, it sounds like this. With, it sounds like this. So we get way more action in the tail of the sound. Now let's hear it in the context of the mix. I really like it. I think at times it's a little distracting or too much. So what I can do is I can take this overall mix knob and I can turn it down so that now we're getting a blend of the wet and the dry. We can see how that feels and then maybe I can even pick some very specific moments to automate the mix knob up just so we get a little bit more from that. So maybe let's say we go two thirds wet here. A little less, let's do 50-50. So I think that's really cool. And then just on this very last reverb tail, at the end of the chorus, as a sort of transitionary effect, I'm going to automate the mix knob right there. And we're going to go up to 100% and we're going to come back down. So we're going to do this, just as we can see it kind of tailing off right there. I'd say maybe even more like that. 
So then we can use that as a nice little special moment to kind of make this like the end of the chorus transition. Yeah, let's exaggerate it even more. Let's let's make that reverb tail really just hang on right there. I like that. I, that gives it that, that end a little bit more action in some way, shape, or form. Now, of course, it's hard to evaluate if I'm doing something right or I'm doing it wrong because I'm doing something very transformative. And so this is where we, as, as independent minds and as unique engineers, we come in and use our discretion in terms of how we want to use these kinds of effects. There's a few places where I use effect rack pretty commonly. Uh, one thing that I'll do with it very frequently is I'll use it on my delays. So I'll create a very complex, weird texture, sometimes using like little Alter Boy even as well, which is not built into Effects Rack, but it is a Sound Toys plugin. Uh, and I'll set up my delay because a lot of the times I like to build very interesting tones and textures into my delays. It allows me to get like really far left field and out there without actually disrupting the primary sound. So like really intense bandpass filtering, crunchy noises, heavy compression that's just like really changing the arc of the decay of the delay, all that kind of stuff. So I use it on delays all the time. Uh, another place that I use it very frequently, I'll, I'll sometimes even just kind of like go through random presets on the instrumental track. So like everything, all of my different stems will come down to an instrument bus and without the vocals, and I'll have effect rack on there, and sometimes I'll just go through and I'll try really weird stuff, like things that are meant to be like reverbs or for guitars or whatever, just to hear what happens if I turn that on the entire two-track mix of the instrumental. And sometimes it creates these really cool, weird, goofy effects that are just awesome for a moment, but would be terrible to have on for a long period of time. And I'll tweak those and I'll use them on the mix bus so that I can have just like transition moments. All of a sudden there's this like weird stuttering delay, almost like dub music style bizarreness that just happens at a transition. So suddenly the whole beat is going cha 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 technical terminology again. Uh, you know, but it's a sky's the limit kind of thing. You can get really out there and really creative. And that's why I think even though I've had this plug in for, I want to say seven or eight years at this point, I'm still finding new, fun, interesting things to do with it. All right, guys, I, I hope that you learned something from that. Uh, you know, if you don't happen to have this particular plug in, sometimes just like really stacking up your effects plugins, like don't be afraid to put EQs, compressors, reverbs, reverbs into other reverbs, delays into other delays, you know, just going totally nuts with those effects because sometimes they produce such cool, unique sounds that you would never think to do. And they really can make a moment, a special moment for a record. So, all right, guys, I hope that you learned something here. Uh, if you like this video, hit that like button. If you want to catch more videos like this, hit subscribe with the bell notification. Uh, if there's, you know, jump in the comment section, tell me how you're using Sound Toys plugins. I've been a Sound Toys fan for a while. Love to hear what your take on that is. Or if there are particular effects plugins that, you know, do something similar that you're using, jump in, let me know. Uh, lastly, you know what we say here on this channel. We are musicians. Sound is our instrument, and I will catch you next time.